What's up all you cool snakes and neonates? How's it going? I hope you're all keeping well, you awesome bunch of folk. So we are going to look at some more <coughs> beautiful and awesome tarantulas in this video here today, guys. Do some updates on some of the tarantulas that have molted out. As you guys know, or some of you know, you can tell or often tell the sex of the spider by the molt. So it molts, it sheds its old skeleton, so it can grow, give it room to grow. And if the spider is big enough, you can have a look at that molt and you can see if you've got a boy or a girl. And what you're looking at is at the very bottom of the abdomen, you're looking for a little flap. But let's have a little look at our P. regalis, which I thought was for sure male, but have a look at this. So this is the molt. As you can see, she's torn up a little bit, which isn't fantastic, but as you can see here, I am managing to move what looks like a little flap, which is exactly what you would be looking for on a female. Now, next mole, I will be able to tell for sure. Last mole, I'm pretty sure this wasn't here. So next mole, I'm pretty sure she'll either mature or she'll maybe be a couple of molts away from maturing. But I would reckon that as long as we can save the next molt before she decides to try and destroy it, um, we will be able to tell for sure if this is a girl or a boy, but I'm about 99.9% sure, sure here this is a girl. And here she is, finally out. I've been waiting for her or him for since that molt. And look at that spider. Now the abdomen's a little bit thin because she is skinny. She needs a good feed. That's probably why she's out already. So it's quite a long molt. But um, yeah, after checking that and it potentially being female, now you can see those legs are a bit chunkier and that thorax is looking a bit chunkier around it too. So, sorry, I'm literally just filming the outro for the last video or one of the last videos, don't know when this is going to come out. I've got a hunter on me right now from the big snake video, that's what I, um, I've just been filming. And uh, yeah, he's still out and I just spotted this. And look at that! Oh, that's a pretty spider right there. Beautiful P. regalis. Gorgeous spider. Hopefully that definitely is female. And now I'll throw up a quick screenshot of a female next to a male. As you can see, there is clear sexual dimorphism in the P. regalis. Then look at our girl. Most definitely that looks like a girl. Now looking at that patterning there, our other P. regalis, which lives right here, Patterning is very similar. We might have two female P. regaluses. After me thinking we had two male P. regaluses, we may have two females. I would love to have a male and a female, especially if that younger, smaller one is male, because it would mean that she would, they would mature at about the right time and we could get some baby P. regaluses in. Now, a few days later, a few week, a week or so later, this is her having a nice little feed. <laughs> that was brilliant. I don't know if I can get that. Another spider that has molted out is Phoenix, one of my personal favourites in the collection. Our male um, Brachypelma behemi, I think, possibly. Mexican flame leg. Beautiful spider. He's looking absolutely gorgeous. He's hardening up just now. Next up, this. You guys remember that the male Mexican red and white was in here? Well, I've had a shift about simply because in here now, as you can see, or maybe see if the glare will go away, that is our big Nandu Trapepe. Brazilian giant blonde bird eater spider. Now, after what happened with Curly Whirly, like I say, I'm positive that was constipation. I got very paranoid with this spider. Um, been waiting for about a year for a molt. It went off food, but it seems to be taking like a month or two to molt out. I usually jot down the day I've spotted them going into molt on my whiteboard, and then that sort of. Uh, I spotted this one about July. It is now. September, end of September I think, 
and um, there's still no molt so I got very paranoid about this after what happened with Curly Whirly because the abdomen was quite big on this one the spider seemed to swell up quite a bit so I popped them in a little cricket tub with some wet kitchen roll for a couple of hours quiet in the cheap seats so I popped them in the the damp kitchen roll uh, on that with the damp kitchen roll for a couple of hours uh, just to see and then what I did was because this spy, the trapepe is always out and about and that male Mexican flame leg is usually quite hidden even though he's a mature male I swapped them around because this uh, enclosure here will also keep humidity better than what he was in originally or she was in I think this one's a she as well and I've been waiting for this one to molt for like a year now and um, we're still waiting patiently I believe it's in molt I'm praying now after it came out of that tub went into this new enclosure I did see a poop so if it is constipated, it's obviously not badly constipated because there was a poop. So I'm not too massively fussed. I'm just going to spray it down quite regularly and see how if we can, you know, keep things softened up down there so that it's going to keep pooping if it needs to. Um, can't hurt it if it's going to go into molt, then things are quite damp in there anyway. I mean, I'm not going to soak it, but I'm just going to give it a light misting now and then here and there just to keep the humidity up and keep it damp in there and try and save this spider because funnily enough that's exactly what we had to do with the baby trapepe we had you guys remember that one I had to save its life and I was so just sheer lucky I caught that one just coming out of a bad molt and it wasn't doing great and I managed to pour get some water in the substrate raise the humidity in there and it came out and luckily we managed to save that spider and it's doing amazingly now so I'm wondering if the trapepes are just a, a spider that needs quite a bit of sort of spraying here and there um, because this is now the big one seems to have a little bit of difficulty I was hoping to get this spider molted in this video but I've been waiting so long I'm not waiting any longer I'm just going to pop this video out and we will do a uh, sexting of this spider when it comes out as you can see we have the big male the mature male Mexican red and white there we have our mature male um, curly hair there not sure how long we're going to have left with that we have our little Mexican red and white, uh, black and white in here, which I think I'm going to switch out with Phoenix once he's hardened up because he's a lot bigger and he's a lot more beautiful and he's out and about a lot more too. And then of course in here we have our uh, Trapepe. As you can see, I've remodeled the house and made it look quite pretty. I've gone down the Dave's Little Beasties route of putting moss in there. That moss has been around this room for about a year and it's still green uh, in the heat of this room. It's still actually going and it hasn't actually been exposed to too much sunlight. So yeah, so the Trapepe is in there just now. So I'm going to give it a little misting down and make sure it stays damp. But yeah, so I knew it was a fresh poop in there because I just put it in there um, the other day. So that is good. Or to lay a sign in the right direction. So let's hop to some night time and have a look at some baby spiders here. Now this is night time so forgive the bad lighting. You got Phoenix in molt right now. Yeah, that or he's sleeping very funny. And this is why we only feed our spiders when they come out and they're hungry. So there we have the Haplopelma longipes, the Vietnamese tiger. Here we have the Thrixopelma prurines, the Peruvian green violet, which is going for me as I'm going past. And the cobalt blue, which unusually is going for me as I'm going past too. That's a rare spider to see. He is going wild right now. And he bolted back in, but the Thailand golden fringe was out and about. So all four of the slings, look at that spider. All four of the slings were out and about. And that is them looking for food. So I've seen them now, they've been right outside their burrows, so that means I'm going to feed them. I don't feed them when their legs pop out, when I just see their toes, I wait till I see every single, or wait until I see the spider outside its burrow actively hunting, then I feed it. That way your spiders you never see down in the burrows, you actually get a chance to see them. Even if it means just at night, when you come in after the lights have been on, you can come in here and you can still see them. Like I say, I apologise for the poor lighting, guys. I'm not going to put a light on because I don't want to scare them back in. Because I'm about to feed them and water them. <laughs> there you go. There is a perfect example of why we wait before we feed them. This one's a big coward. He usually runs, but he's doing well. So that's Kobe. Or Cobalt Blue. It's a scientific name or part of the scientific name that's still on there. Oh. 
Very pretty bum pattern. Not got any blue yet, but still just a small little five, six centimeter sling. It was pretty cool, eh? So, before we end this, I've got a little top tip for you guys coming up. Um, or just a little tip for you. Um, it might help you with your spiders and it'll help you with all your animals, lizards, anything that eats bugs and beasties. You guys will benefit from this next little tip, reptile rich tip coming up. Just got back, got my chiro bag, got bugs and beasties in here for all the animals. For however long or short that's going to last them. So I got my bugs and beasties. What's the first thing I do? Feed all my hungry animals with them? No, no I do not. First thing I do is make sure these little locusts, crickets, all that kind of stuff, all get a good feed themselves. They get looked after pretty much just as well as everything else in this room. There's a couple of reasons for that. First, most importantly, the greatest thing you're going to see from that is the goodness that these guys eat is going to go into your animals. So you get them from the pet shops, they've been sitting around for God knows how long, they've not eaten for God knows how long, not drunk for God knows how long. Then you are just feeding, potentially, the longer they sit in your house, you're just feeding your animals empty husks. You're feeding your animal a starving animal with nothing in its tummy. There's no goodness to it, nothing at all, because that animal's using all that fat, all that nutrients, all that goodness just to survive while it's shot up in this little box here. So, first thing I always do before they go to the animals, is rehouse them so the bigger ones go into a bigger tub so like so the locusts and the large crickets go into a larger sort of critter keeper or larger tub and they get some fresh bedding they get the life of luxury <laughs> they're food but they're animals too so i like to look after everything so they go to that and then they get a good meal i usually give them curly kale and carrots carrots is fantastic for moisture for hydrating them and curly kale, they love curly kale, that kind of stuff. I tend not to feed them lettuce. Lettuce really has nothing to it. There's nothing to lettuce. It's just purely water, basically. Um, and it rots pretty quickly and just sort of destroys all the stuff in there. So I tend not to use lettuce. I use carrots sliced up and then I use the curly kale or the likes and then pop that in there with them. They get a good feed 24 hours once I know all those animals have had a good feed, a good hydration. Then I start feeding them off to all of my animals. And I do that sort of once a week. They come in I get, or once a week, once every two weeks. Because another bonus of doing this is your live prey actually lasts longer. It lives longer because it's eating and it's drinking and it's doing everything. So it's fantastic. As long as you look after these guys, you can make them stretch. If you're going into your, your bugs and there's like half of them are dead in the bottom after a few days you've wasted your money. So by feeding them and keeping them happy, they're going to live longer, they're going to be better for your animals, they're going to be better for your wallet, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I would highly recommend feeding your bugs and beasties when you bring them home, guys. And of course, I keep doing it once they're empty. You've got any scraps left over from tea time, any veg or fruits or anything like that. I tend to only use the veg. I try to only use the veg because um, fruit ferments and then you end up with very happy dead bugs, but dead bugs just the same with the fr fermented fruit. So I tend to just use the, the salads and the veggies. And uh, yeah, if you've got any leftover from tea, it never costs me a penny. It's just what I've got left over in the fridge I give to these guys. And it goes to good use. It's better than throwing it in the bin and it rotting and going to landfill. So yeah, there's Reptile Rich's top tip of the day. Right guys, before we end up this video, I just want to make a massive thank you to all of our new subscribers. Our, the, the support and subscribers that we have received over like the past two weeks, to most YouTubers would seem like nothing, but we've gained like 50 subscribers in like the last week and a half, two weeks. It's been absolutely crazy. So to all the new subscribers, everyone who's, got, who's getting involved with the channel, thank you so much. Um, don't forget if you're new, Tell your friends, share the channel around, tell everyone you can. Um, I was hoping to hit a thousand subscribers this year. Don't think that'll happen, but 800 is definitely looking like we're going to hit the 800 mark, which means that next year we will definitely hit that 1000 subscriber mark. However, if we keep on going at the rate we've been going at, we might even hit that thousand subscriber mark, but I can't do that without you guys. I cannot do that on my own. I need your help. You watching this right now, I need you to, if you're not already, subscribe. And if you haven't, hit the bell button, hit the share button, 
put it on Facebook, wherever you can. Put the channel on Facebook and let's keep this ball rolling and let's see how many subscribers. See if we can get close to that thousand subscribers mark this year, guys. Um, it would be mind blown if we could hit the thousand, but I, I think we'll definitely hit the 800 mark. So guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you for all the support you guys have been sending out with all these new subscriptions. As always, like, subscribe, comment, share the channel around, hit the bell button, all that good stuff. You guys know what you're doing from me, my bugs, beasties, the reptiles. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. Take it easy. Peace.